chronic inflammatory response. So keep in mind that I'm talking about a subset, something that was named by Dr. Shoemaker, C-I-R-S, talking about a syndrome that's specific. And I want to tie it into a paper. So if I, if I may, Dr. Eric, I'm going to talk about kind of now the paper that really, really sparked this conversation about, okay, long haul Sears, what in the heck do they have to do with each other? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to read you the title. So people who, who want to go look this paper up, we can, and I'm going to give you the cliff notes, but I'm just going to let you know. So it's from January 21 medical research archives. The title is treatable metabolic and inflammatory abnormalities in post COVID syndrome define the transcriptomic basis for persistent symptoms lessons from Sears. So what this paper found in essence is that in Sears, you will have the presence of molecular hypometabolism. You will have prolif proliferative physiology. You'll have ribosomal response, stress response. You'll have gene activation of TG, um, TGFBR, and you'll also have co-expression of two important, um, the total receptor and the CD14. Okay. So those are what we see in that. Um, what they're saying is that there is a there is a definite link between these two because what they did in this study is they said, wow, you know, a lot of this long haul, they sure have the same presentation as the Sears patients. And again, Sears patients, you, they have um, symptom clusters and there's 13 symptom clusters. And if you answer positive in eight of the 13, there's a 95% chance that you can be diagnosed with Sears. Okay. So what they're saying is that there's a lot of similarities in fatigue, brain fog, um, you know, definitely like myalgias, all these really matching symptoms of people with long haul. So the question at hand is in the paper is, is there, is there a correlation between the two? And they indeed found that there is a correlation between, I can actually go to the, the exact numbers. It says, uh, post COVID syndrome negative patients had an average of 8.2 symptoms and no VCS abnormalities. Now, that's called a visual contrast test. Just going to rabbit hole that real quickly. So, the VCS test, visual contrast test, that is a test that you can do online. It's about $13, takes about 10 minutes. Everybody at home, you can do this yourself. What happens is when you have a biotoxin illness, your ability to see contrast will change. And so 10% of the population can have a false negative in that the, they have some brain in, uh, at, you know, inflammation, but they can pass it. But what they're saying is that 8.2 uh, had symptoms in the negative and no VCS. There's no changes in the simple test that you can use the VCS test. And we'll come back to that if we need to talk to it again, about it again. But in the post-COVID group, they had an average of 18.2 symptoms and 75% showed deficits in their visual contrast test. Again, we're comparing a Sears patient, so someone who's been diagnosed with chronic inflammatory response syndrome to someone who's got long haul. Okay, that's what we're that's what we're looking at in this paper.